How's it going, guys? It is 3.58 a.m. Sunday, June 5th, 2022 here in Japan, and we have a medium difficulty question for renal for step one and step two. This is high yield stuff, the BUN to cranine ratio, fractional excretion of sodium urinary osmolality parameter type questions, okay? All over step one and step two. No fucking excuses. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, a man underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now let's start the clip. 69-year-old dude. He's got a two-day history of abdominal pain and urinary incontinence. Medications, diphenhydramine, metoprolol, simvastatin. His creatinine is 1.6 milligrams per deciliter. Normal range 0.7 to 1.2. Question wants to know what's most likely to be seen in this patient. Now right away... This guy has overflow incontinence due to a combination of his BPH. All old dudes are going to have BPH to some degree. And when you combine that with an anticholinergic medication such as diphenhydramine, okay, long fucking discussion. I've made plenty of clips on this stuff. Not going to make this a 14 minute tangent, but you, but you need to know in particular that first generation H1 blockers such as diphenhydramine or chlorpheniramine, TCA, antidepressants such as amitriptyline, as well as antipsychotics. Uh, they have nasty anticholinergic side effects, okay? So when we consider cholinergic dumbbells, the mnemonic diarrhea, urination, meiosis, bradycardia, bronchoconstriction, excitation, neuromuscular lacrimation, salivation, sweating, well, anticholinergic is the opposite. So rather than diarrhea, we get constipation. Rather than urination, we get urinary retention, right? This guy has urinary retention, okay, due to the anticholinergic med and the setting of BPH. This is post-renal. Okay, as the etiology here. So we have pre-renal, intrarenal, post-renal. As I said, long fucking clip, but I'm gonna keep things consolidated. Now, you need to know that for post-renal, cutting to the chase, your BUN to creatinine ratio is going to be under 20, okay? And you're gonna have a fractional excretion of sodium greater than 1%. I'll explain all this in a moment, don't worry. And you're gonna have uh, a urinary osmolality that is lowish. So even if you don't know the numbers, okay? I mean, 500 to 850 is a normal range technically, but you got low number 350, high number 550. So we expect it to be low. So our correct answer here is gonna be B, okay? It's the only one where fractional excretion of sodium greater than 1%, BUN to ratio is under 20 and the urine is dilute. Now I'll explain. If you have pre-renal as the etiology, meaning you have decreased blood flow to the kidney over generally a subacute or chronic period, uh, i.e. congestive heart failure, diuretic use such as furosemide, NSAID use, or just general dehydration, the kidney interprets that low blood volume as a need to jack up fluid reabsorption to compensate, and it accomplishes that by reabsorbing urea and sodium in the PCT. Water will follow urea and sodium. So because we increase urea reabsorption, BUN is high, blood urea and nitrogen is high. That's why the ratio is over 20 in pre-renal. And we're pulling sodium out of the urine, okay? Water's following the sodium. So that's why the sodium remaining in the urine is low. And that's why in pre-renal, our fractional excretion of sodium is under 1%, okay? So now what you need to know in terms of intrarenal and post-renal, intrarenal being often just acute tubular necrosis, post-renal being BPH as with this question, or even cancers like cervical cancer or ovarian cancer can impinge on the ureters. So you need to know that you're just not going to have a BUN creatinine ratio over 20. Okay, it's just lower than 20. You don't have to worry about is it under 15, 15 to 20. It's absolute nonsense. Okay, if it's under 20, it's just not pre renal. If our FINA is over 1%, it's just not pre renal. You don't have to worry about is it 2, 4%. Once again, bunch of fucking nonsense. Okay, and as far as urinary osmolality is concerned, in pre renal, we're pulling water out of the urine to compensate. Yes, you're pulling urea and sodium out of the urine, so you could argue that that's decreasing the osmolality of the urine, but we're pulling so much water out of the urine that in pre-renal, we get concentrated urine, okay? Whereas in intra and post-renal, we get dilute urine because we're not pulling the water out of the urine. So in post-renal, in this guy, just to recapitulate, we're gonna have a BUN to creatinine ratio under 20. We're gonna have a fractional secretion of sodium greater than 1%, and we're gonna have a dilute urine. In this case, 350 is our dilute urine. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.